You know what happens when you get evicted? You incur all of these extra fees, all of these late fees, all of these court costs on top of what you already owed. And so this does not fix the problem. This does not help people. When we talk about seven, upwards of seven, maybe even 11 million people. So for me, yes, it's very personal. It's personal because first of all, we're talking about my people. We're talking about putting out, when I look at my district, when I look at St. Louis, you're talking about putting my St. Louis folks out on the street and I'm not just going to sit back and be quiet about it. This is not charity. No. This isn't benevolence. This is about being responsive to the needs of a people in the midst of a pandemic-induced recession, which has destabilized families and caused unprecedented hardship. That was Congresswoman Cori Bush of Missouri and Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts. That was the summer when they slept outside on the Capitol steps. They were there pressuring Congress and the White House to extend the moratorium on evictions for millions of families at risk of losing their homes. Congresswoman Bush has been homeless herself. She lived in a car at one point with two young children. Like she said, for her, this is personal. Congresswoman Presley has for a long time been a passionate advocate against eviction, which disproportionately falls on black women. And that is what we mean when we say representation matters. For the first time ever, we have a black vice president who happens to be a woman. We have a record number of black women in Congress. And it is no coincidence that this Congress and this White House are now pushing policies that will help black women, like on child care and the child tax credit. Because representation matters. Black women helped to save our democracy in 2020. More than any other group, they were responsible for getting Donald Trump the heck out of the White House. And the changes aren't just at the federal level. We're seeing more black women mayors of major cities. We're seeing black women like Stacey Abrams lead the fight to protect our right to vote. And black women are stepping up and speaking out to make sure that all of us have a voice and a vote and a roof over our heads. And today, House Majority Whip James Clyburn confirmed that he pushed candidate Joe Biden to put the first ever black woman on the Supreme Court before the future president promised he would do exactly that, which would be a really big deal, the first black woman on the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land. Hmm, I just started visualizing that and that Oh, good. Joining us are two guests who have been at the forefront of helping to get more black women into politics. Minyan Moore is principal of the Dewey Square Group. She was an aide to President Bill Clinton and a senior advisor to Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016. And Yolanda Caraway is the president and CEO of the Caraway Group. Her many roles in politics have included serving as a longtime member of the Democratic National Committee. They are both authors of the book, the great book, for color girls who have considered politics, which I highly recommend and love. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for, Thank you for inviting us. So Yolanda, I'm gonna start with, start with you. Congressman Clyburn reportedly pushed Biden during the 2020 campaign to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court and say so out loud. What would it mean to black women and girls to have a black woman represented on our Supreme Court? Well, you know, it's, 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 it's all about diversity. We don't have, we've never had a black woman on the Supreme Court. We know that we think differently, we make different decisions. Um, and there are so many black women that would be so qualified and so great at the, you know, in, in doing this. Um, it, and it would make such a difference. I mean, just like when Kamala was elected, you know, you saw these little girls uh, that were so happy and they saw something that could be, that they could be would be the same thing, but also it would also give, you know, give us, I think, a sense of um, relief almost that we would have a strong black woman, woman on the Supreme Court who could represent us. Mignon, talk about um, the importance of the vice president, Vice President Kamala Harris in this particular moment when the world is particularly hard, really hard for women and especially black women in this pandemic and the impact on the economy, but also the fact that we have to deal with racism and sexism every single day. 
Well, again, thank you, Zerlini, for having us. We're so proud of you as a Black woman who is sitting in an unprecedented space as well. The fact that we have the vice president, it means a great deal, not just to us who are sitting here talking to you, but to America. And when she's in those rooms, I've had the opportunity to watch her speak up and own her own agency as it relates to Black women. When she's in those rooms, she's talking about child care. She's leading on the Voting Rights Act. She will probably lead on the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women's Act, which we are sitting in the midst of right now. So having her there, she brings a different perspective, yet she is still the vice president. Many would say she represents all of America. I say that is true, but she also represents a framework and a a sense of of knowing what it's like to live in a person's body, to live we're looking at abortion rights. She understands that women, all women have to have the right to choose who what they want to do over with their bodies. So I am grateful that she's at that table. I know she speaks truth to power. I know that her values reflect who we are and it's great to have her there. And Yolanda, in so many ways, black women won the election for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We showed up, we organized, and then we showed up, and we got our whole communities to do so as well. Do you think the White House needs to fight harder for voting rights for these two bills that are in the Senate or the compromise packages um, that are being considered to protect voting rights for these same black women and, and voters who put them into office and into the majority? I think they're doing an adequate job, not an adequate job, but I think they're doing a pretty good job right now. But I think that this, this is going to be a real battle. The closer we get to the next election, the next presidential election, it's going to get worse and worse. And we've got to get our A team on the ground right now going to states like Texas and Georgia and Florida and change, and it, and change these, these um, stop, stop these people from passing these, these laws that are going to take away our voting rights. Um, it's just, you know, it's just ridiculous. We have got to, to, and the White House has got to be with us. Well, Zerlina, if I may, I was What do you I think about in... the filibuster, Yolanda? Oh yeah, Mignon, you can answer that question too. Jump in, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I was actually encouraged this week when I saw that Senator Globacar introduced the Freedom to Vote Act. Now, I'll tell you, I'm one of the ones that say, why do we have to renew this every 25 years? Why can't we just have the right, right. to vote? But the fact is, we do have a White House who is pushing a Congress to make sure that we have election integrity, that we have civic participation. They have some good things in this bill. And I heard Senator Schumer on the floor this week say, we have the Democrats with us. Senator Manchin, who has been his own set of his own North Star, has indicated that he's going to try to get Republicans to pass this bill. So I say the time is now. I think Yolanda is absolutely right. We have all these draconian bills passing in these states, and we need to put an end to that right now. And we need a national voting rights bill. Mm -hmm. Yolanda, one of the things that I'm a big proponent of is working on political campaigns. That's how I met both of you, um, working for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Um, And I think it's really important for folks out there to see politics and campaigns as a career, as a job, as a way to be engaged in their world and their country. Um, In terms of working on campaigns, why do you think that's so important? Why has that been so important to you in terms of your engagement in activism and, and speaking up on behalf of black women and the black community? Well, I think at a very early age, I learned that I always wanted to grow up and have a job where I could help people. At a very early age, I learned that being in politics and working to get people elected was a different kind of way of helping people. And it's one of the most important ways that we have. Mignon always says that we have to look at politics. It's it's not a... uh, we have to look at it as an everyday thing. I can't remember (laughs) her exact words, but politics is a lifestyle. It's not a thing that you do once every four years and once every two years. It's a part of everything that you do. It's a part of church. It's a part of your job. It's a part of everything. We're always dealing with politics. And we can't turn our backs away away from it because we feel a little bit intimidated or because it scares us. Um, It's just so important that we stay involved. 
Absolutely. And Mignon, you were the one that taught me that even if you're the, I mean, I've been the only black woman in many rooms, but on the campaign, if I was ever one of the only uh, black women in a particular room, because there's lots of people on the campaign and the meetings could get quite small, um, that I am <laughs> not there alone, that I'm there and, and what, I, what my concerns are and what my community cares about, I'm there representing that and I need to speak up. I can't be afraid and be like, oh, I'm the only one here. I'm there um, to speak up on behalf of those people who can't be there. What is your advice to young women out there on how to navigate those kinds of spaces? Well, I'll go back to something Dr. Angelo taught us a long time ago. You can't, fear and courage don't exist together. So when you walk into those rooms, you have to know that one, if you're a person of color, they see that. You can't out white white people. And I try to say that all the time. You just can't do that. Two, own your, own your color, own your agency, own what you know. But number three, be prepared when you walk in the, into those doors. It's okay to be black. I embrace it. It's okay to be a woman. I embrace it. But I also embrace the fact that preparation is my friend. And when I go into those doors, I know that I can compete with the best of them. I have the confidence because I've studied, I've worked hard, I've played by the rules. And so I'm not intimidated when I go into them. I go in with Maxine Waters. I go in with Dorothy Height. I go in with, you know, all the women that have come before us. So I feel like I can have the 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 steel to stand up to anyone. And I have had to do that on many occasions. Yes, she has. I oh, I've testify. seen you in a lot of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Me you um, do your thing oh. in a lot of meetings. You taught me so much <laughs> about how to be in a meeting. Oh, my goodness. Um, it, it's been so wonderful to have you. I hope you guys will join me again very soon. It was so great to have you. Mignon Moore and Yolanda Caraway, thank you so much for being here on this special night where we are focusing all on women. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.